All right, in this video, I'm going to discuss how to construct a prediction interval for a new response, why not? Okay, and so for the multiple linear regression model, recall our model is y equals x times beta plus epsilon, where y is our response variable, it's an n by one vector, x is our design matrix, and it's n by p, beta is all of our model parameters, and that's p by one, and epsilon is our model error terms, which are n by one, okay? And so we have n, which is our sample size, and p, which is the number of parameters. Okay, and we've made the assumption that epsilon follows a normal distribution with mean zero and variance sigma squared times i, where i is the index matrix. It's an n by n index matrix. All right, so why not is a value of your response variable, but it's not necessarily one of the uh, responses that you've already observed. So that's why you see this little subscript not, okay? So why not equals x not transpose times beta, okay? Where x not is basically one, um, one, row of x, right? But it's not necessarily one of your observed x's. So um, x naught equals the first item is going to be 1, and that 1 is there uh, for the intercept, okay? And then the next item is going to be a value of the first variable, okay? Then a value of the second variable. If you have k variables, we'll go all the way to the kth variable, okay? So x naught is a p by 1 vector, okay? So p by 1, where p is basically the number of variables that you have, plus 1 for that intercept. Okay, so it's p is k plus 1, basically. All right, so x naught is a p by 1, so when you transpose it, you get a 1 by p. Beta is still a p by 1, so you can see that these guys cancel and you're left with a 1 by 1. So this is a one value of your response variable given all these uh, possible values of your uh, predictor variables, okay? So we're given one value of each predictor variable, all right? So this is what we want to construct a uh, prediction interval for, this, this why not, okay? And my estimator of why not is why not hat where this is going to equal x naught transpose times b. b is my least squares estimator. b is my least squares estimator. x transpose x inverse x transpose y. Okay, that's my least squares estimator. All right, so I'm going to use this to estimate this. Now, if you remember, the way we construct our prediction intervals is we kind of, uh, we talked about this in more detail when I was talking about simple linear regression, so I'll refer you to that video to um, think more uh, about this. But uh, basically what we do is we think of y naught minus y naught hat uh, as our estimator, and then basically we rearra rearrange the um, the probability statement so that we have a probability statement that uh, is for this one value, why not? Okay, but we need to calculate the variance of this guy uh, in order to construct that um, that predict that probability statement. So uh, let's start with that. Let's figure out the variance of why not minus why not hat. This is going to equal the variance of why not plus the variance of why not hat. Okay. The variance of y naught, right, due to our, uh, so this is the variance of x naught transpose times beta plus epsilon, okay? Now, x naught and beta are, they're uh, non-random, so their variance is zero. So this is basically just the variance of epsilon, right? And don't worry, I'm going to come to this side in a second. But the variance of epsilon we assumed is sigma squared times uh, i. Uh, actually, this was epsilon naught, 
right? So you don't need the I because epsilon naught is just a single model error term, okay? So it's just sigma, it's just sigma squared. Okay, so that was just this uh, variance of y naught. Now the variance of y naught hat, okay? So what's the variance of y naught hat? This is gonna be uh, y naught hat is x naught times uh, b, right? Here it is. y naught hat is x uh, naught transpose times b. All right, so the variance of this is going to be, okay, so this is like a, a vector and times the variance of b times that vector uh, transposed, and when you transpose a transpose, you get itself again, okay? So I basically I just took the variance of this guy, okay, so I'm here. Uh, and the variance of b, we've previously shown the variance of this, this estimator, b is sigma squared times x transpose x inverse, okay? So I'm left with x transpose uh, x times sigma squared x transpose x inverse x naught. Okay, you see the like terms? You can pull them out. So you're left with sigma squared plus one plus x naught transpose x transpose x inverse x naught. Okay. All right. So there we have it. This is our variance of that residual, basically. Okay. So we don't know what sigma squared is, right? We'd never know what sigma squared is. So what we'll do is we'll plug in the estimator s squared, which is our mean squared error, which is um, the sum of our squared residuals divided by n minus p. Right, so e transpose e divided by n minus p. Right, where e is our residuals. Uh, let me write this here. E is y minus y hat. Okay, so this is an n by one vector of uh, observed y's and then an n by one vector of predicted y's. Right, those are those are our residuals. Okay, so we plug that in to get. The estimator of this variance, right, which is going to be, so it's going to be s squared, 1 plus x naught transpose x transpose x inverse times x naught. And then uh, the standard error would just be the square root of this. So the standard error, now when you square root s squared, you just get itself times the square root of one plus x naught transpose, x transpose x, inverse times x naught. Okay, so now that I have this estimator, this the standard error of this estimator, I can use this to construct my uh, confidence interval, or not my confidence interval, it's because it's, it's not a confidence interval for this, but it's a prediction interval. So uh, the prediction interval, so the, let me go ahead and write that differently. So the one minus alpha times 100% uh, prediction interval for y naught, okay, is um, y naught hat, okay, plus or minus t alpha divided by two with n minus p degrees of freedom times s times the square root of one plus x naught transpose x transpose x inverse times x naught. Okay, and there we have it. We can use this to calculate prediction intervals for a new observation, why not?